Yeah. So uh, we had a very nice presentation from uh, uh, AK Tripathi ji, and yesterday we had some very good presentations. Uh, coming from NSCFI side, which is an industry stakeholder, I would prefer to take all of you through the physical and practical aspects of agri PV, uh, and to sort of take you through what are the challenges on ground that we have seen. Uh, what are the opportunities for agri PV plants in India, and what is the road ahead? This is the kind of uh, 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 you know the information I would like to take you through for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I don't have content slides, but I have some very good visual slides that will actually give you a very nice feel of uh, uh, the agri PV plants. Uh, so to begin with. Uh, we are very happy that with Indo-German Energy Forum, NSCFI work very closely together and we have come up with a joint report for agri voltaics in India. This report talks about the OU of operational projects and the relevant policies that are existing for agri PV. Uh, we have started this back in 2019 December uh, until February we were able to visit six to seven sites, uh, but thanks to COVID we were unable to complete further visits uh, and a couple of other plants we have you know uh, uh, documented them even without visiting. There are some other nice plants also we wanted to uh, document. Unfortunately in this report you don't find them, but after my presentation you will find them. Mr. Sanjeev Fadnis uh, from Jain Irrigation, we've been trying to get hold of him for quite a long time. Unfortunately we couldn't, uh, but I'm happy that he is here. He'll give you a presentation on their very beautiful uh, and innovative uh, agri voltaics project. So the uh, icing on the cake is that the uh, Honorable Agriculture Minister of Government of India has referred this report in the parliament on March 9th uh, when they're talking about the uh, different measures government is taking to promote agri voltaics in our country. We also have a very interactive uh, geolocation based tags uh, in Google Maps jointly run and organized by NSCF and IGF where you can just access it, click on the location and see where in which part of our country agri PV plants are, what is their actual location and to some extent if the Google Earth view is good, you can get a satellite view of the solar agri PV plant also uh, for these uh, plants that we have geotagged. So this is uh, about this report. I'm sure you will get access to this report after this meeting. Uh, we have uh, IGF and NSCFI, both of us host this in our websites. Uh, maybe IGF team can share this report to you later. Now let us circle back to where Tripathi G has left, which is on the legal aspects uh, and the regulatory framework for agri PV. To understand that, uh, we have to look into India's land use patterns. Uh, I am not an expert of land use patterns, but from after spending one and a half year on understanding agri PV, uh, talking to the on ground people, some of them our own members on the challenges they have faced, we have circled back all of their problems to this land use patterns uh, issue. So if we look at the total land use, the way it has been classified in India, these are the nine different classifications. You start with forests, then area under non-agriculture use, then barren land, then permanent pastures, tree, culturable wasteland, fallows, fallows other than current fallows, and net area zone. So in this uh, particular aspect, what will happen is the land classification, if it is classified for one particular thing, you have to use the land for the same particular aspect. The moment you are shifting its classification, Number one, there are different rules for it. There are different prescribed regulations for it. Number two, in some states, uh, because land is a state subject, it is virtually impossible also to execute this kind of things. So if we are looking forward to have a comprehensive uh, policy uh, framework for agri PV, this is the first thing that we have to target. Like I mentioned to all of you, these are this is how we are tracking the agri voltaic plants in India. These are the 16 agri voltaic plants that are currently operational. Uh, the link is here. Uh, the link is also with the report in IGF website. You can go and access it. You can see all the plants with their capacity, with the installer's name, 
I mean, the project's name, everything geotagged in this. And it should not come to us as a surprise that the major concentration of agrivoltaic plants is in the Gujarat state or the western part of our country, even some to some extent we can add Maharashtra also. Because that is the only state where as a part of our study we have observed that the government sponsored projects or government initiated projects are more and they have formed sort of a baseline for the future tenders and future projects. So that sort of whatever barrier of entry to a new technology or new concept is there. As soon as government started owning it, the things are made pretty much simpler. However, there are some plants other than government plants which are research and development institutions. Yesterday, you all must have seen a beautiful presentation of Dr. Santra. Uh, we also have Junagadh Agriculture University, Dalbagh University, uh, where they have actually uh, set up research test beds for agrivoltaic plants. Those are also some things that are very important. I will take you through the types of agrivoltaic plants in the coming slides. So in our understanding, we can broadly classify the agri PV plants in our country into three different types. Number one, the agri PV plants where the farming is done between the inter row space or inter space farming. So there is no architecture or infrastructure below the panel for cultivation between two rows, wherever there is space, there you do agriculture. People call that also agri PV. There is a second type of agri PV where they use uh, the same conventional plant uh, or solar panel height. They won't make any architectural changes and uh, irrespective of that, they continue to cultivate crops below the panel. That is the second type. The third type, which our colleagues from Germany will only tell women, I mean, they will acknowledge that is the only actual agrivoltaic plant is an elevated structure plant where you are increasing the height of the structure and you are uh, continuing your cultivation activity below the panels. So this is these are the three structures or three types in which the total agri PV in our country can be classified. If you look at here, this is our chairman. This is myself here, that uh, bottom most picture. You, although I am wearing a suit in the scorching sun heat, the shade of the panel was somehow helping us. But this photo was taken near uh, uh, Jamnagar, uh, this plant is uh, GSPL's plant. Uh, GI, GSPL plant, uh, which was uh, GSECL's plant, which was executed by one of our members, which is Harsha Bagas. So these are the three kind of type of agri PV plants that we have seen as a part of study in our country. Now I will take you through some nice photos. After this, I believe we have some GIPCL presentations and uh, a gen irrigation presentation they can do more justice to these photos than me. But since uh, some of these photos have been personally taken by me or our friends at IGF, I wanted to take you all uh, through these photos. This is a beautiful uh, photo uh, or rather a bird's eye view of a GIPCL's one megawatt plant near Anand at Amrol, Gujarat. This is a beautiful photo. Uh, there are two reasons for it. Number one, of course, you can see a very good symmetry of panels their shadows and the interspace farming that is being done. But the lines that you have to see are the drip irrigation lines that are laid in the, uh, you know, the uh, interspace uh, uh, farming place. So this photo actually kind of conveys in one shot what agrivoltaics actually is. The water part, the energy part and the food part, all three of them can be seen here. And when we talk about this nexus concept, that is water, energy, food nexus, all three of them are interdependent. All three of their security is interdependent. And this, there cannot be a better visual representation uh, than this. Uh, this is the second plant which I was talking about, which is the GS ECL Panandaro Gujarat plant. This is again the one megawatt plant. Here, the reason I'm showing you this is, uh, Unlike the GIPCS plant, here the solar plan panels are installed at a uh, elevated structure with a seasonal tilt. You know, as a country, at least until last two, three years, we were never accustomed to or had appetite for trackers. 
due to their own reasons i don't want to get into those but we were to some extent or a large extent we made peace with seasonal tracking system where manually you change the tra tracking uh, the inclination angle of the solar panels based on the seasons so here this photo was captured during one of those sessions where uh, they are changing the tail angle uh, and here you can beautifully see uh, the plants below and if i am not wrong those either belong to egg plant or lady's finger and this is the gscl plant on the north western part of gujarat this plant doesn't need any introduction i am sure yesterday dr santra has taken all of you through this plant uh, and i would say this is sort of a benchmark plant uh, for how to do agri voltaics in india especially when it comes to the way rainwater is harvested the way crops are grown and without any doubt uh, research uh, is being done uh, if we look at kazri's plants from a different perspective let us see uh, it from a perspective of a solar plant developer so you have a solar power plant you own and you own the land you have installed solar that land is a barren land and now after installing solar you have two options number one there will be weed growth below the panels and interspace uh, uh, rows you spend money get the weed out once in 3 months 4 months so that it will not hamper your performance of modules or second you take the alternate route and make that barren land have vegetation cover ensure that you are taking care of the cultivation and crop production and finally uh, you know you earn an extra revenue or you know pro involve local community become uh, uh, you know, have a good land use ratio so this is the kind of example this plant sets but it doesn't stop here this is a beautiful uh, photo i have captured uh, thanks to the support from our uh, uh, kazri uh, santra dr santra and his team uh, i think this is something that sets uh, this plant aside from all the plants we have seen that rain water harvesting uh, tank uh, which especially we know jodhpur that side of rajasthan in even some parts of shekhawati region Uh, receive one of the lowest rainfall in the country and uh, using water for cultivation uh, using water for panel cleaning and harvesting rain water which can be used for both of these things through a network is something that is really really uh, interesting as well as something that we have to all uh, uh, learn uh, very very strongly from this plan i am i might be repeating all these things i'm sure yesterday to tobias winter ji and santra ji have told this uh, but i'll just i wanted to show you uh, these pictures and i wanted you to see them from my perspective or from my vantage point this is another classic example cochin airport cochin airport is the one of the few international airports which is fully powered by solar or i think i should correct my sentence it is the only international airport which is fully powered by solar uh, not only this they went one step ahead and they started cultivating crops below the uh, solar panels and i have come to know very recently that they don't sell these vegetables but they distribute it among the employees of the airport what can be a better model than this this is something that uh, uh, we can even you know talk about how airport land uh, unutilized land can not only accommodate solar but also agriculture but the best part of this picture is the pumpkin that you are seeing uh, in the frame uh, and uh, uh, this shows that there is no uh, crop or vegetable or something that can not be harvested with uh, uh, solar uh, pan among solar panels this uh, is very close to my heart uh, many people don't know this um, now it looks more beautiful this was captured in 2017 at nisc campus the reason why this is close to my heart is because i was one of the three people who sort of sowed the seeds and the flower uh, samplings uh, in the soil here i myself was one of the three or four people and we wanted to try out that time dr sk singh was uh, acting director general of nice 
uh, and we wanted to understand uh, and study the impact of it. Uh, and NICE team has very capable researchers and scientists and it was their impression to you know have uh, a agri pv system in the campus now they have a far more advanced one but this was something that was done almost four and a half years back uh, the main thing that we were able to understand from this is apart from vegetation you know you can also have flowers between the interspace this uh, row uh, inter row space uh, where you can use them for aesthetic purposes uh, for you know looking making your plant more appealing and all so that is something that we have tried here uh, i would now request all of you to personally visit nice campus you will now see it in a more beautiful form uh, than it is here when it was captured four years back so the next uh, is a very nice uh, photo i have got from our igf friends this is urban agri pv you see how beautifully the rooftop uh, uh, <coughs> solar panels have accommodated uh, the uh, plants below and the water cha collecting channel and uh, the pots uh, plants like aloe vera are there this is another example of how you know agriculture has now no longer become a rural phenomena we have seen in lockdown many people have become gardeners they have started growing their own vegetables in their home hydroponics and all so the agri pv concept is nothing but a you know very strong push uh, to make urban farming a reality and i can see there can be no better way than you know accommodating rooftop solar with this i am looking forward to seeing those days and those plants <coughs> where you will have a small hydroponic system powered with uh, uh, you know the solar power on top of it uh, where you will produce solar energy pump it to rooftop from your rooftop to the grid at the same time uh, use additional energy for your home uh, and your uh, agri pv system uh, which is there now i will come to the actual subject of uh, today's uh, presentation of mine we as an industry association we are always at the front or forefront of uh, advocating for a policy that is in the interest of the industry as well as our country today it is no brainer when we say that agriculture and energy should go hand in hand coincidentally or fortunately indian government has two flagship schemes or rather announcements they wanted 100 gigawatt of solar by 2022 and they wanted to double farmers income by 2022 what can be a better tool to make it a reality than combining agri and solar so that is something that all of us truly believe tripathi ji has rightly mentioned in his presentation about the true potential of agri pv in a few slides i am going to take you through that also but the main challenges that we have seen for this thing to become a reality is the trade off when we look at the trade off today we don't have enough scientific proof or techno economical proof that says the amount of money that goes into increasing the expenditure of the plant for raising the structure of the uh, the panel's height uh, and the performance increase or the yield what is the trade off between this uh, technical and economical aspects is not established in indian context our friends in germany have done it very thoroughly isc front office report should be appreciated they have done a very very in depth study and they have come out with it today we don't have that so from an industry perspective from a plant owners perspective large solar park owners perspective they are still apprehensive of collocating agriculture in their solar parks collocating solar and agriculture farms i'll come next point but i am talking from the solar industry perspective because i am coming from the solar industry domain and representing the stakeholders so how that trade off can be established proved with facts and then you know incorporated in the industry's paradigm is something that is remaining as a challenge we need more people like dr santra we need more people uh, in that domain to do research work with industry come up with pilot projects and then demonstrate this trade off that is when there will be a confidence in the industry when it comes to agri pv second part is no brainer 
you know when we started agri pv study this part never hit us that on a normal conventional solar farm the entire thing is handled by a solar developer and local people machinery and all for an agri pv plant you don't need you not only needed that solar people or solar guys you also ha had to in involve the agricultural uh, people scientists farmers local community and all now there are two different people from two different domains who should sit together and work together if there is any sort of miscommunication or coordination ultimately the plant will suffer either you will not get enough generation or you will not get yield or both of them will get you know ultimately dampened this we have found a lot in whatever sites you have visited i don't want to name the sites but underlying reason i have seen in some of the sites which are now defunct is this stakeholder coordination the third is very very important it is an extension of my first point on what is the trade off how you are quantifying the trade off if you see the performance analysis of a solar panel or a solar plant with vegetation below is the temperature gradient decreasing dr santra's uh, research says yes decreasing temperature gradient will contribute to increase in production and vice versa because of the shade what is the impact on the cultivation what is impact on the yield whether it is increasing decreasing good for it bad for it this kind of quantification of the performance has not been happened so this is something that we should happen now the other three challenges are from the policy side these are the operational sides i have told you the last three are policy sides i am almost done with my presentation so the land use classification i have started in my first slide this is the root cause of the problem we have a system where which is always aiming to make simple things complicated we are experts in that land is already a complicated thing we spend hours as an industry uh, to even understand you know hours not not even hours months as an industry to gather land resource for normal solar plants now imagine what will happen if agri pv plants become a norm so we need to have a directive a significant shift in the way policy is made when it comes to land so that agri pv can be facilitated the second aspect is very very important and i am i don't know whether i can announce it now but very soon we'll work with igf on the second aspect because when the new concept comes when a new technology comes when a new thing evolves we need to have appetite to accommodate the changes while having a benchmark standard set so that there will not be any compromise in the quality or performance today agri pv is being done in three different ways everyone has their own uh, impression understanding implementation and all actually what is good for the system what is good for solar what is good for vegetation ultimately what is good for farmer and most importantly what is good for country these things should be very well analyzed studied and produced that is when we can say that now we can scale it because if i am going to my next slide where you will see how i have chalked the scalable path of uh, uh, agri pv in our country so the third important point as we talk about any other thing is financial incentives so far kusum component a has been lukewarm only i would say some tariffs are not so attractive apart from that we need some incentives for farmers so that farmers can you know own agri pv plants farmers can accommodate solar plants on their farms so this is something that remains to be addressed thoroughly Uh, this kusum scheme all of you know i will only touch on component a the government wants 10 gigawatt of decentralized solar 500 kilowatt to 2 megawatt uh, they there are 16 states or 17 states i don't remember uh, who have come up with uh, a tariff policy who have come up with uh, uh, adoption for the tariff for this thing rajasthan has good tariff punjab is okay madhya pradesh is okay okay gujarat is not at all okay telangana uh, uttarakhand Uh, two northeast states i think meghalaya and uh, assam they are coming up with these tariffs but you know every time we go represent every in front of the agriculture commission saying that sir any tariff below 3 rupees will not do enough justice for component a if these are small systems 
until 2 megawatt 3 rupees is still we are quoting the lowest of the lowest rung if you look at the total techno economic analysis 3.3 3.4 should be the bare minimum tariff for agri pv planks because they are in their nascent stage they will come down we can't expect 1.99 from agri pv plants from day one we have to support them give a good you know sort of a margin for them to operate let them learn lessons from it and then you start you know uh, tightening the screw when it comes to tariff but you are starting from 3.06 3.12 2.89 2.76 then we can uh, you know we cannot operate we, we will be smothered and we will have no you know bandwidth to operate so that is something that we are slowly working on this uh, many of you know uh, some good tenders are going on uh, the all three of the bid dates are done uh, the orissa one is also done like I told you 3.08 UP 3.10 tariff they have given uh, for agri PV plants. MP has given 3.07. These are on the higher end. There is no state that is higher than this. Uh, I think Rajasthan is the only state higher than this, but we want tariffs that should be uh, appealing for both uh, farmers and uh, developers. Now I'm coming to the last part of my uh, presentation, which is a potential. I have shown you the type of land classifications and all in the beginning of a presentation. So if we take 1% of India's irrigation land, that is the land that is under active irrigation, which is producing food, crops and all and actively uh, par part of our uh, food systems. 1% of them, if we, if it switches to agri PV, we will get 187 gigawatt of agri PV. Imagine the potential leave rooftop leave utility scale leave floating pv leave everything 187 is coming from one percent of irrigation land and we are an agrarian country we are the seventh largest country in terms of land one percent of the land is huge that is why we are getting 187 gigawatt let us remove arable lands aggregation aggregation lands let us say we will not touch them let us go to dry lands barren lands if we capture one percent of them we will get 673 gigawatt of agri -PV. That is almost one and a half times our 2030 target of renewables. I am talking about only solar here. When we talk about arable land, this will go much higher to 895 gigawatt. So this shows the potential of agri -PV in India. I personally say to our friends, India is born for agri -PV. We have to do agri -PV only now because land is already a problem. Agriculture is our main area of concern. Why don't you club both of them? So this chart we have given to government in our report. Government is receptive. I personally feel our small scale farmers, our farmers in the grassroot level will have the potential to, you know, make solar a revolution truly. Annadatta will become Urja Data if we make the concept of Agri PV very, very, very popular and more uh, this thing. So this is personally from my side, from our experiences, visit to these places, interaction with uh, industry and also interaction with the farmer societies and all. The last thank you slide is a very nice again plant from Dialbag Institute in Agra, where we have visited personally. Uh, there, uh, it is uh, funded by DST uh, through a grant between India and Norway. They are also testing agri PV. This is a very typical another level of structure, but this is also a good uh, way to experiment. So my all in all conclusion here is that the time for agri voltaics is now. We have to frame at the earliest all the possible standards and guidelines at the earliest bring out pilot projects and at the most earliest uh, announce incentives so that our farmers and our industry can coexist and flourish together. Otherwise, we would have we will be really, really uh, foolish to miss this bus when it comes to uh, utilizing the potential of both uh, agriculture as well as solar. This is from my side, uh, handing it back to Anil Kumar Garu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Subramaniam. Uh, you made a very hard